Hi there, it's Catherine here from Make a Finger Cat. Um, I got some new stuff. Yay! So I thought I'd have a bit of playtime, and I thought I'd have a bit of playtime with the camera turned on. So it's a bit of a stash reveal at the same time as actually playing for me with some new stash. So what have I got? Well, first of all, I got the fabulous new Seth Actor paint sets. So, there we go. So I'm just going to clear a little bit of room because I've managed to leave the right mess all over the rest of my desk. I've got no room to work at all. So, am I in the screen even vaguely on the camera? Yeah, I think I am. Look, lovely Seth. Okay. So, this is the set I immediately loved, but I actually love this one too, and I thought, no, I'm going to have to have both, because I've got all these other sets. Um, so even though it's not the cheapest paint in the world, it does last ages, because you never need much of it. And the finish is just so fab. Um, so I don't bother keeping the boxes, because I don't really have room to store them, and I want my bottles to be just get at all, so they usually go in one of my sort of tubs on my bookshelf. So what have we got? Blue Lagoon. Let's have a look how many are transparent. Oh, they're nearly all opaque this time. So we've got Blue Lagoon which is a semi-opaque. Butter, opaque. Magic Moss, opaque. Double Denim, really nice looking colour. Looking forward to playing with that. Opaque. Glassy Ice, a really nice grey. Really nice that one. Steel grey, so a darker grey. Again opaque, my favourite. Uh, so Venice blue, which I also love, in opaque. And this Spanish ball brick, and this is the one that made me go, oh, I've got to have that, I've got to have that. And you know what, they'll go really well with these other paints, so let me grab them. Okay, so I know this tub's getting a bit full. Just a bit. So they're not going to be able to fit in here, so I'm not quite sure where I'm going to store, store them, am I? So let's find my other Seth to stamp uh, paints. Um, easier said than done when you've got as many paints as I've got now. Might need to do something about this, never mind. Um, right, first of all, my other favourite is Midnight. And Green Patina absolutely adore those ones so these were previously my favorite paint colors um of the seth ones i think that'll go perfectly as well that so, oh they all just team perfectly together don't they aren't they gorgeous right where's the other ones so mahogany i also love um trying to find the other one Pretty sure Torp was one of the Seth Actor ones, but I could be wrong. Um, just realised how much the paint separated there. That's interesting to see the other colours that are in there. Was Buff one of the Seth ones, I wonder? It might well have been. Must be around somewhere. Maybe mud splat? No, I don't think mud splat was one of his. Anyway, I'm sure it'll, the others will turn up. But what I love about these paper artsy paints is they all just team perfectly together. There really isn't like you could put what is, you know, prawn goes perfectly with that steel grey. And in a little bit of that butter and that's a perfect combination and that I think was one of the Tracy Scott special editions similarly you can go for something like smoked paprika really really nice orangey color put that with uh, maybe double denim really nice and then the green patina again perfect so they are the absolutely gorgeous paints to work with of these. So I'm just going to leave out one, two, three, four, 
that's the one that's the extra one. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Right. So I'm going to put the others away for the moment. Well, away. I'm going to put them on the floor next to me. So I'll probably end up grabbing something. Probably midnight. In fact, I have two of midnight, but there's not much left in that one. So I'm going to leave that one out just in case. Um, all right. So there's my newbie paints. So I'm going to put those to one side, but I am going to use them in a minute. And what else did I get that's new? I went on a bit of a sap out to phase. So I've bought his new, uh, two of his new embossing powders. So I bought the Patina Oxide, which I'm not entirely sure whether you'll pick this up on the camera or not, but it's like a turquoise with the metallic bits in there. So it looks like um, a bit like green patina really, but it's got a bit more turquoise to it. And then this is Chunky Rust, so this has got some really large pieces of the embossing powder within there. So it's not going to give you a flat surface, it's going to give you some texture. So these are his new embossing powders called Baked Texture. And they're done by Emerald Creek. So those two newbies that I've bought. What else did I get? I got some new Distress Oxides. I didn't go for everything. But I bought these three Distress Oxides. I knew immediately I had to have the Blueprint Scratch Sketch because I don't have that as a normal Distress Ink and it's one that I really want. Um, but I thought, yes, Distress Oxide is just gorgeous. Can't wait to play with that. Then the other one that I really fancied was this Aged Mahogany because I thought it was a really nice looking colour. And again, I don't have this as a Distress Ink normally. So I thought that was a nice difference. And then I thought a nice, cool, pale one would always come in handy. It goes sort of more with the iced spruce and... Um, yeah, the iced spruce type finish. I'm trying to look at the other colours that I've got. Yeah, probably iced spruce is the best that I could suggest that it would go with in terms of making some really pretty... Things. And I'm thinking maybe to get my jelly plate out and play with that. So they're my three new inks. What else did I buy? I couldn't resist the Distress Resist Spray. So this is the Textured Resist Spray from Ranger. Um, dries clear, is water resistant. Work on a protected area, spray direct to surface for splatter effect or through a stencil and let dry. Then apply water-based inks over the surface. So looking forward to playing with that, especially with my Distress Oxide, the new ones. And next up was, I thought I would just slightly expand my alcohol ink collection. Just a small amount, not much. But I've gone for pool and rust in the alcohol inks. And the alcohol ink foil tape sheets, which I thought sounded quite fun to play with, and some more alcohol ink cardstock. Um, but I did get this more for a technique that I saw Tim do on when he was at Creativation. Um, using Distress Oxides and the Alcohol Ink cardstock. So I thought I'd give that a play as well. Um, so yeah, so I've now expanded my little alcohol ink selection. So I need to do, do something that's storage. I don't think that that's working as a storage element anymore. But there we go. That's all my new pieces. So I'm gonna start with my Distress Oxides and I'm gonna start with that technique that Tim was demonstrating at Creativation. Um, and for this, I need to find one of my little things in this pot. Here we go. Where is it? Aha! Distress glaze. And I need a blending tool. So, 
let's have a go at this. Um, I think I'm going to get my proper arranging mat out as opposed to my little cooking sheet. So I've got a piece of the um, alcohol ink glossy cardstock. So this is glossy, not something you would normally apply inks to um, of this kind, but certainly not what I would normally apply them to. So I'm going to do the usual score of adding them to the mat, putting some water on it and sliding my cardstock through it. Now what's really strange to me is I would have thought with it being a glossy cardstock that what would happen is when you've put this sort of ink on it wouldn't absorb but I suppose it's not just a normal glossy cardstock, is it? It's something that's been specially created to work with certain kinds of inks. So I've obviously got filthy fingers already because I've left some yellow bits on there. But there we go, there's my first colour, which is the blueprint, ske blueprint sketch. Just stuck my thumb straight into the ink pad. Not sensible, never mind. So now I'm going down with the shaded lilac. Oh, that's gorgeous. Oh, loving it. Loving it. Loving it. Okay. Now, normally I would grab another piece of paper and start wiping up all that ink, but I'm, I'm going to be sensible and not do too much tonight. Okay. Now I'm going to go in with a completely different colour. In fact, I'm going to give it a quick dry first. Okay, so it's not completely dry, so you can probably see still some liquid on the surface. But I just wanted a little bit of a dry before I add the aged mahogany because it's such a contrasting colour. <gasps> loving it, loving it, loving it. Wow. I mean, that is just fab. Love it. Right, I'm actually going to add more water and just see that ink move a bit more. Let's see what happens there, and then I'm going to dry it. Okay, and I think I'm just going to go back in with the blueprint, blueprint sketch. Some more of that. Beautiful. And all I'm doing is really lightly touching the surface. I don't want to completely coat it. I want some of those sort of like dotty speckles. Um That's just beautiful. I love, love the effect. And what's really weird is that obviously we've got some shine to this page because it's on glossy cardstock. Because um, I've had quite a lot of water, it's actually already started to buckle the paper. I'm going to give it another blast with the heat tool. Okay. I'm just going to blot off anything that night might still be wet and give it a quick wipe and that is gorgeous I already love this even without the technique with the distress glaze so you can see there you've got some different kinds of patterns different layers you've got um, hardly any of the, the shaded lilac coming through actually so I am going to put a little bit more of that just one little dab of the ink a little bit just to layer that up on the top because I think it just needs another little bit on the top there okay so really happy that we've got different layers of color going on different pattern going on it's quite marbleized i love the really deep bit of aged mahogany there that's sort of stuck 
and then all the blueprints get there's little bits of the shaded lilac sort of coming through it's not the strongest color so it's something that i'm going to have to be wary of when i'm using it what's the most appropriate time to use it but this is when the magic happens so i have my little pot of micro glaze and i keep my little tool um sponge in there so that it doesn't impact on anything else but it's always there ready to go and i don't use this very often but uh, distress micro glaze and what I think I'm going to do is just grab a post-it note I think if I can find one oh yes I think this one's here so what I think I'm going to do is put that art down around about there nope that's going to annoy me because it's not perfectly done in the middle but what I want to do is just block a little bit out of it. And now I'm going to take this and I'm going to wipe it all the way around using the Distress Glaze. And what it's doing is it's taking off all the sort of oxidised look to it. And hopefully this will become really clear. I might have actually got a little bit too much Distress Glaze on the uh, tool. So I think I might need to do a quick work in a minute. Which is fine because it now should be resisting any form of water-based product. So a baby wipe should resist perfectly. And shouldn't start reacting. So, I don't know if that's really visible as to what it's done. <gasps> well, it's still not really visible to what it's done. This goes to show that when you show things on telly, and you look at them and you think, oh, that's brilliant, and they don't really do anything for you. Oh, no, I think I can see. So you've got more of the oxidised bits here, and they're not around the square. Right, I'm going to try adding more water. Let's see what this does, because obviously the water... The oxide reacts with the water, and that's when you get the chalky finish. And that's what I'm expecting to see disappear. Well, I can safely say that's not quite worked how I was expecting it to. Having said all that, it is really pretty. I also really like the fact that I've now got these weird lines going in. They work really well. With the extra layer. Almost more marbly. Well, I don't know. Maybe, maybe a second try would be better. But for now, I'm still super happy with it. I think it's definitely not got the oxidising to it, so it's not got the chalky look to it. But maybe I'd not done enough layers and enough water to really oxidise it before anyway. So, that's a little bit of a lesson, maybe. But, loving the new colours that I've got. Um, of course, I've now distress glazed that, which means I'm not going to be able to stamp on it in anything other than maybe an archival I don't know but we'll see we'll see what I end up doing with it loving it and there's my new distress oxides um, I'm not going to put this away because I'm also going to have a little go with my distress glaze aren't I uh, my distress resist which has disappeared here it is right now Tim was recommending that you do spraying in a box etc which is probably a sensible idea, and I do not have a box to hand. So of course I won't do that. But what I will do is find a piece of card to work on. Okay. A bit of scrap, but it can get cut down and become a ATC, I'm sure. So rather than me going for the uh, spray spray. What I'm going to do 
is do some splatters and see what this does. And then I'm going to leave that to dry and I'm going to try my new paints instead. So let's get a, a full sheet out of the mixed media cardstock that I have and let's have a little play with our paints. I'm just showing you that the it's sort of a bit raised at the moment. I don't know if you can pick that up on the camera. So we'll see how flat or not that dries in the end. All right, I think we might go for a little bit of a masterboard effect with these paints just to give them a try. So I'm going to grab my um, very well used and loved brayer. Not perhaps the best well treated brayer. Um, and maybe my small 3b5 jelly plate as well. Let's have a little go with that. Let's see what we can come up with. Um, just trying to make sure I've got enough space and that some of this is on the camera. So I have to start, of course, with the Spanish Mulberry. Give it a good shake. So obviously paints they can separate and settle. Um right. give this a bit of a ooh, for some reason my jelly plate is extra sticky today, so don't know what's with it. Let's do this one. And we'll take a little bit of it onto the plate and then onto there. Realised again, I'm as usual going to take this off the camera. <gasps> Love that colour! It's silly, really, to have um, put that paint onto there because I'm not really using that as a thing. So I'm just going to put that down. Gorgeous! Gorgeous! And I'm just going to wipe the brayer off on there. So I'll do that with it and see if I can use up any of that last bit of paint. Maybe a bit of water might activate it. Not really. Okay. So, might as well go with the next colour. I think we'll go for double denim. And I might as well go straight onto the jelly plate. And I'm not really thinking of the final effects. I am literally just getting some colour down, having a test of these colours, seeing what they look like. That's beautiful. Look at that. I think I need a little bit more of that. Um, that is gorgeous. I knew you would love Seth's new colours. As soon as I saw that more break, but also some of these blues are just beautiful. In fact, I'm going to go up there with that and immediately then pull it onto that one as well. They just layer so beautifully. Look at that colour, it's gorgeous. And put this right there. And I love this style of playing. I'm just creating a background paper. I'm not thinking about what I'm doing, just doing it. Okay, next one is butter. So this is from the other set. So, so far the mulberry, oh no, mulberry and the double denim are from one set. Uh, uh, double denim and the butter are from one set and the mulberry is from the other. Oh, that's a beautiful yellow. Really nice. Obviously, I'm not now going to get completely true colours because of the fact that I'm mixing them with the other colours that are there, but love that. Get my 
jelly plate a little bit of a, a bit of TLC. All right, so let's go for magic moss. Oh, forgot to shake it. solid one I think so we're going to do a little bit more braying rather than straight onto the card I think maybe let's stick a bit of a stencil down on here and find I'm just looking for a piece of scrap paper to appear with my jelly prints. Not much, but there's a little bit of pattern starting to appear. Probably shouldn't have left that quite as long as I did. Never mind. Perfect. No, it's not long enough that. That's fine. So I'm going to go in with a lighter colour. I'm going to go in with the glacier rice. Let's see if I can't help transfer some of that pattern at least onto my plate off my plate sorry onto my paper let's see what happens when I do that well not quite it's still some of it sticking but that's a nice colour um not sure it shows up so well but I like that it's managed to lift some of the pattern off It's kind of brilliant. Oops, that's not coming off. Okay. What have we got now? Steel grey. Again, that's quite a lot. Oh, that's a lovely colour. Um Again with some stencil just to see if we can lift a bit of that colour off that way. Maybe if that works. I don't know if that's gonna work or not. No, I don't think it would. And then beautiful. Oh, I love jelly printing. I really do. It's such a fab way of adding colour and patterns and that mixed with the um, the brayer work it just picks up obviously the texture that's on the brayer since it's not the most loved brayer well it is loved I think it's well used it's just not really cleaned beautifully okay now this is a completely different colour look at that vibrancy so the others have all been quite muted and pale and now we're getting this nice sort of turquoisey colour turning up and I don't want to put too much in terms of a block of colour so it's more just getting some bits of that coming through love that I think when I start adding more stenciling and more bits and pieces but for the moment I'm onto the last colour now Let's see what we get with this. And this is Venice Blue. And this one I also thought was a beautiful colour. stencil so I know I'm using the same stencil over and over but that doesn't matter it's just about getting some of the colour down in fact I might just try and do it that way 
it's heavy that does anything. Oh, nice. So that gives it a different impression. And then we're going to lift it up, put some down. already started started sorry my English was terrible then um started to take shape let's get my stencil a wee bit of a, a rub down with the baby wet that's now far from wiping rather than applying paint clean baby wet not that I'm particularly careful about taking care of my stencils, but it does just help keep some of the definition working better. There we go. So that's a really good starting point for a master board. And then I'm going to grab one of my Seth Acta stencils from Stencil Go and see what we can do with this. So. And it's amazing when you apply them in a completely different way. Look at the colour difference, they're fabulous. This mulberry is definitely going to be one of my favourites. Um, contrast now obviously because I have got the mulberry on the sponge and I'm not changing sponge we are going to get some slightly different effects um, and potentially the colours will mix a little bit but I'm sure you can probably still see what I'm doing and the colours that are coming through do you know what it's gone to a sort of a taupey colour now so I'm going to go for the green uh, the magic moss. And Seth was asking on Facebook what people thought of the colours. Did they prefer the colours or the names? I love them. Love them all. Let's come up with some really cool names. A bit different. Um, apologies. Don't know when the video cut out. But that's glacier ice onto black cardstock. That is gorgeous. Love that. That'll be used for something at some point. Right, so I've done a bit of stamping using the glacier ice, and now I think I'm just going to go for a few splashes um, using the double denim. I'm just using the jelly plate as a, a palette rather than anything else. Apologies, I've just shut the camera. Um, so, fan brushing some water. I'm just going to add some splashes because I can't do a project without splashes at the moment. Ooh, that was quite a lot of splashes. That's quite interesting. Okay, and then I'm going to take a credit card. I don't know if there's enough paint on here to do much with it. Oh, there's a little bit just to take that as a stamp because I can't possibly use this paint, not use this paint. Okay, that'll do. I'm going to lift this and put it onto here and see if that does anything. Well, it's added a bluish haze to that background, so that'll do. So, I think that's my background done. So at some point, I'll have to turn that into something. Hmm, not sure when, but I'm sure I'll do it at some point. So I'm going to come back now, and this is dried. So there is some rays to this. This has definitely got some texture to it. I have no idea if that's even vaguely going to come out on the camera. But there is some texture to this, but it is completely dry. So I'm going to go back in with 
a, I think a blending tool and one of my discoloured, but uh, it works just as well. Uh, little pads, that's one of my Distress Oxide pads. Okay. Doesn't matter what colour it was at the beginning. And I'm going to blend that. Isn't that it's just gorgeous? So, um, obviously, I'm going to cut this down to something at some point, but I am going to add a different colour. So, let's just have a little bit of fired brick because obviously, you'd think that they were quite similar. Just a slightly browner with the aged mahogany. So let's see what the fired brick adding that does. Oh yeah, it's definitely a warmer tone. More of an orange tone for fired brick. And let's go for one of my browns. So my walnut stain. And that's definitely more of a brown. Yep. And vintage photo just as my other... Uh, to see what that looks like. Let's put that up on here. So they definitely look different. I'm going to go back to that aged mahogany and just come back up this corner again. Um, oh, it's beautiful. So beautiful and rich. Um, that's lovely. So I am running out of battery on, not battery, memory space on the camera. So bear with me because I think it might die any minute now. Again. So I'm just taking a cloth and wiping what ink was on the top of that resist. And as you can see, it's come bright white again. It's absolutely gorgeous. And now I'm just going to, because this is just stress oxide, I am going to go a little bit crazy with water. And then I'm going to just blot that excess up. I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do with this. And I can keep going in, adding layers of the colour. And that distress splatter is not going to change. Now, the next thing to try um, with that distress resist is putting it over the top of a colour. So I'm going to put this over the top of here. Let this dry. Sort out my camera and come back when this is dried. Okay, well it's time waiting for this to dry. I've managed to sort my camera out so I've got a few more minutes left. Um, I'm just going to do a little bit more work on this because what I've realised I've not used are my Baked Texture Seth Actor embossing powders. So I thought if I could add a little bit of embossing to this just to use this one. I've decided not to use the Chunky Rust. I think the Chunky Rust might work better with this or with this. But... Oh, she says nearly squishing her thing. Uh, but I think the patina oxide will work nice on this one. So, bear with me whilst I get another stamp. Okay, so I'm going for the Gummy A Pan text stamp, which is one of my favourites. Um, I'm not entirely sure whether this embossing powder is going to work better with something fine or with a larger image. So, let's just see what happens. Well, it certainly functions like a normal embossing powder in terms of it's catching the um, the finer powder has been caught beautifully on this stamp set, on this stamped image. But what's actually happening is you're getting some little bobbles, which is the grittier texture. So I'm going to swap the stamp set. Okay, so I'm going to go for this splotchy stamp. 
which is a Stampin' Up one, Gorgeous Grunge, which works perfectly with this kind of thing. And I'm just going to tip that on there and just put a little bit more on. And let's see what happens. Okay, so I'm super happy with how that works. What I'm going to do is, off camera, because I'm running out of space, um, is to just do a little bit more stamping of both the text and that, um, that one, to see how that comes out. Okay, so off camera, I've added some stamp lines in the embossing, some more of the text bits, and some splotches. Uh, in the embossing powder I'm really happy with it it goes perfectly colour away with this particular project um, I'm going to have to experiment more with it I think it's probably better rather than stamping and embossing it's probably better doing a slightly more free form or indeed creating a whole background out of it maybe stenciling and there with the Versify, uh, Versimark and then adding it on top of that sort of covering wider area um, I love the the way it looks when there's extra layers of it um, so it's like a little puddle of molten lava but um, I think it works perfectly for this masterboard um, yeah so, so I'm happy with that even though I know and I've realised it's upside down um, even though it's not the perfect way to use it I actually really like the different colour that you've got within some of the embossing so there we go there's that Okay, so I think this is dried. I'm not sure about that piece, maybe. I've just given it a quick whiz with the heat tool, which might not have been the best of ideas. I've no idea what this is going to end up looking like, so I'm not really thinking. I know what this is going to look like, but it's more to see what the distress resists, how it works. So, I am sticking a very contrasting colour over the top. Um... So this is not to look at what it actually looks like. Ah, so it is doing what I was expecting it to do. So you can see these splatter here. It's resisting the next layer that's gone on top, but it's showing through the colour that was underneath. So you've got the white showing where it was the cardstock colour. Then you've got the pinky red colour, which is the age of mahogany, along with the browns and the reds that I put on, which is the next thing. And then you've got the blue of the blueprint sketch on the top. So, just to prove this is not ideal, but um, let's find me a stencil. So I'm going to put the stencil down. Okay, lift it up. And I'm going to leave that to dry. And this I'm going to clean up. And I will need to just double check what it is that Tim says on how we're meant to clean these. Clean the distressing, uh, distress resist up without ruining our things. I shall have to do that at some point. Now, what I can see straight away is because it's a really thin layer that's gone on, this is starting to dry a lot quicker, whereas the, the splats are obviously concentrated. I can also see you've got a bit of texture going on. Nice. Okay, so what I was saying before I put the heat tool on was I'm not sure if you meant to use a heat tool with this or not, but I don't see why not. So let's go over in a different way. We're going to go straight into paper. Gives it obviously a really thick coat. Add a little bit of the water. Okay, that was quite a lot of the water. Let's see what happens. Um, so as I said earlier, this is not about what the final piece looks like necessarily, although I'm sure I'll use this for something, probably an ATC. 
this is about seeing how it works. So now I'm just rubbing off any of the ink that's actually on the resist. There we go. So we can see here the white spatters, which is the original cardstock, the bright pink spatters, uh, or the peachy pink spatters that are the first layer of ink. Then you've got the darker colour. Uh, it now looks quite brown in terms of the background that was the blue print sketch over the top. Um, and then you've got the lighter bluey colour, which is actually the distress, um, the shaded lilac that I've put on top. Now, obviously, because it's colour on colour, it's not going to be a completely true colour, but I love that. It's got a bit of a shine to it because it is obviously resisting. Um, so it's got quite a nice texture to it as well. You can sort of see that it's been sprayed, which is a bit different. So yeah, super happy with that. Okay, my final thing to do with this one is to just test out my chunky rust. And I'm going to grab another stencil. So this stencil is going to go over the top. I'm just going to use my Versamark through the stencil. To add these stars on the top of this which should add a different effect as well let's see what this is like oh this is interesting it's got like little bits in it oh oh yeah definitely um when they say chunky rust they're not kidding okay probably could have done with being a bit sensible and then bossing buddying this before i started but never mind Okay, so what I find really interesting is it's got like some fibres in here, um, along with the little bits of the metal that looks like sort of sand, <laughs> but it's quite there's quite a lot of fibres, so it's really interesting texture. I'm looking forward to experimenting more with that, but I think as an ATC background, that's a fabulous, fabulous piece of art already, and that's just using the resist spray. Some embossing powder and the distress oxides and a couple of different colours. Really happy with that. So that's a fabulous piece. Um, so time to clear up and assess what I've made and see if there's anything else I've not played. Oh, I've not played with my alcohol ones. They can wait for another day, I think. Um, because this is probably a ridiculously long video, especially since I waffled throughout. So here was my starting point which was the alcohol ink paper with distress oxides and then the micro uh, distress glaze um, which didn't quite have the effect I was expecting but I'm really happy with it still um, so again that's probably going to get cut up into a background of some description okay then I've got this piece that obviously I've just been showing which is lots of different um, textures going on different the different glazes that fabulous chunky rust embossing powder that definitely needs um, more play time with to try and work out how to use it the best way uh, but I'm gonna have lots of fun playing with that really happy with that and then my piece de resistance is the um, the masterboard um, not entirely sure what I'm gonna make this into but at some point I will do something with it and finish it off. Um, I can see lots of potential for doodling and adding little marks and then maybe some feature images on top. Who knows? Might just make it a nice background paper. We shall see. But that's using my new te uh, paints. So, I hope you enjoyed that little playtime. I know it's no finished pieces, but hopefully you've enjoyed watching me work out how to use certain things or how not to use certain things i hope you enjoyed my little playtime and my blathering on and if you did please don't forget to give me a little thumbs up because those little thumbs up make me feel happy and know that i'm doing something that you enjoy 
and of course if you want to see more most of them don't have me blathering on for ages uh, but if you want to see more then don't forget to subscribe and until next time bye